Irene Joliot Curie was a French scientist, the daughter of Marie Curie and Pierre Curie and the wife of Frédéric Joliot Curie. Jointly with her husband, Joliot Curie was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1935 for their discovery of artificial radioactivity. This made the Curies the family with the most Nobel laureates to date. Both children of the Joliot Curies, Helen and Pierre, are also esteemed scientists. Biography Early Life and Education Irene was born in Paris, France. After a year of traditional education, which began when she was 10 years old, her mother Marie Curie realized her obvious mathematical talent and decided that Irene's academic abilities needed a more challenging environment. Marie joined forces with a number of eminent French scholars, including the prominent French physicist Paul Langevin to form the Cooperative, a private gathering of some of the most distinguished academics in France. Each contributed to educating one another's children in their respective homes. The curriculum of the cooperative was varied and included not only the principles of science and scientific research but such diverse subjects as Chinese and sculpture and with great emphasis placed on self-expression and play. This arrangement lasted for two years after which Irene re-entered a more orthodox learning environment at the College Savine in central Paris from 1912 to 1914 and then on to the Faculty of Science at the Sorbonne, to complete her baccalaureate. Her studies at the Faculty of Science were interrupted by World War I. World War I Initially, Irene was taken to the countryside, but a year later when she turned 18 she was reunited with her mother, Marie Curie who was running the 20 mobile field hospitals that she had established. The hospitals were equipped with primitive X-ray equipment made possible by the Curie's radiochemical research. This technology greatly assisted doctors to locate shrapnel and wounded soldiers, but it was crude and led to both Marie and Irene, who were serving as nurse radiographers, suffering large doses of radiation exposure. Both would eventually die from the consequences of accumulated radiation exposure over their professional life. After the war, Irene returned to Paris to study at the Radium Institute, which had been built by her parents. The institute was completed in 1914 but remained empty during the war. Her doctoral thesis was concerned with the alpha decay of polonium, the element discovered by her parents, along with radium, and named after Marie's country of birth, Poland. Irene became Doctor of Science in 1925. Research As she neared the end of her doctorate in 1924, Irene Curie was asked to teach the precise laboratory techniques required for radiochemical research to the young chemical engineer Frederick Joliot, whom she would later wed. From 1928 Joliot Curie and her husband Frederick combined their research efforts on the study of atomic nuclei. Though their experiments identified both the positron and the neutron, they failed to interpret the significance of the results and the discoveries were later claimed by Carl David Anderson and James Chadwick respectively. These discoveries would have secured greatness indeed, as together with J.J. Thompson's discovery of the electron in 1897, they finally replaced John Dalton's model of atoms as solid spherical particles. In 1934 the Joliot Curies finally made the discovery that sealed their place in scientific history. Building on the work of Marie and Pierre Curie, who had isolated naturally occurring radioactive elements, the Joliot Curies realized the alchemist's dream of turning one element into another, creating radioactive nitrogen from boron, radioactive isotopes of phosphorus from aluminum, and silicon from magnesium. Irradiating the natural stable isotope of aluminum with alpha particles, i.e. helium nuclei, results in an unstable isotope of phosphorus. By then the application of radioactive materials for use in medicine was growing and this discovery allowed radioactive materials to be created quickly, cheaply, and plentifully. The Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1935 brought with it fame and recognition from the scientific community and Joliot Curie was awarded a professorship at the Faculty of Science. Irene's group pioneered research into radium nuclei that led a separate group of German physicists, led by Otto Hahn, Lisa Meitner, and Fritz Strassmann, to discover nuclear fission, the splitting of the nucleus itself, emitting vast amounts of energy. Lisa Meitner's now famous calculations actually disproved Irene's results to show that nuclear fission was possible. 
years of working so closely with radioactive materials finally caught up with Joliot Curie and she was diagnosed with leukemia. She had been accidentally exposed to polonium when a sealed capsule of the element exploded on her laboratory bench in 1946. Treatment with antibiotics and a series of operations relieved her suffering temporarily but her condition continued to deteriorate. Despite this, Joliot Curie continued to work and in 1955 drew up plans for new physics laboratories at the Université d'Orsay, south of Paris. Political Views The Joliot Curies had become increasingly aware of the growth of the fascist movement. They opposed its ideals and joined the Socialist Party in 1934, the Comité de Vigilance des Intellectuels Antifascists a year later, and in 1936 actively supported the Republicans in the Spanish Civil War. In the same year, Joliot Curie was appointed Under Secretary of State for Scientific Research by the French government, in which capacity she helped in founding the Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique. The Joliot Curies had continued Pierre and Marie's policy of publishing all of their work for the benefit of the global scientific community, but afraid of the danger that might result should it be developed for military use, they stopped. On October 30, 1939 they placed all of their documentation on nuclear fission in the vaults of the French Academy of Sciences, where it remained until 1949. Joliot Curie's political career continued after the war and she became a commissioner in the Commissariat à l'Energie Atomique. However, she still found time for scientific work and in 1946 became director of her mother's Institut du Radium, Radium Institute. Joliot Curie became actively involved in promoting women's education, serving on the National Committee of the Union of French Women, Comité National de l'Union des Femmes Françaises, and the World Peace Council. Joliot Curies were given memberships to the French Legion d'honneur, Irene as an officer and Frederick as a commissioner, recognizing his earlier work for the resistance. Personal Life Irene and Frederick hyphenated their surnames to Joliot Curie after they married in 1926. Eleven months later, their daughter Helene was born, she would also become a noted physicist. Their son, Pierre, a biologist, was born in 1932. During World War II Joliot Curie contracted tuberculosis and was forced to spend several years convalescing in Switzerland. Concern for her own health together with the anguish of leaving her husband and children in occupied France was hard to bear and she did make several dangerous visits back to France, enduring detention by German troops at the Swiss border on more than one occasion. Finally, in 1944 Joliot Curie judged it too dangerous for her family to remain in France and she took her children back to Switzerland. In 1956, after a final convalescent period in the French Alps, Joliot Curie was admitted to the Curie Hospital in Paris, where she died on March 17 at the age of 58 from leukemia. Joliot Curie was an atheist. Joliot Curie's daughter, Hélène Langevin Joliot, is a nuclear physicist and professor at the University of Paris, her son, Pierre Joliot, is a biochemist at Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique.